All right, good evening everybody. This is Dave here. Um, what's in front of you is what I like to like to boldly say just about all technicians, HVAC, you know, heating, what have you, should have this, you know, in their arsenal. Notice I said arsenal, not in their truck. Because, you know, some may already have this, but they decided not to use it or um, you know, feel as though that this is not a necessary component to something that's just way too fancy. This here is a zebra stat. And with the zebra stat, it is a, a control device that you can use in lieu of having to jump out wires, having to need a thermostat, turn on or turn off a system or a unit without having to wait or have a delay time. Check for continuity in your lines or shorts. Um, check for uh, a voltage status. Also use as a three amp fuse protector. All those things are built into this unit. Now, in a nutshell, zoom in here a little bit so you can see hopefully you can see that pretty good I noticed my on camera light kind of there we go um, as you can see to left here you have red switch here which has three three positions continuity analyze and activate and below that you have three LEDs voltage. Now, with the switch up here, like, again, like I said, you can check for continuity. So you can check to see whether or not if you have good continuity um, in your low voltage thermostat uh, wiring, and if you don't, that you may have a possible short. If you move the switch into the middle position where it says analyze, you can hook this up at your furnace with your thermostat on the wall and to see and verify whether or not if the thermostat, whether it's calling for heating, calling for cooling, or calling for you know emergency heat or what have you, is sending signals to your furnace unit. Okay, so when you hook your wires up to the furnace, uh, you set it to analyze. Let's say you got the thermostat set to heat. Well, here depending on how, um, uh, sorry, I lost my train of thought. Um, depending on the type of system you have, and when you want to hook all your wires up, uh, each LED will light based on the condition that's being called by the uh, thermostat. So if the heat is on, you know, you'll see a uh, green light indicating, um, like a green light, yellow light, yellow light indicating that uh, thermostat is calling for heat and is sending a signal to heat. And not only that, if you want to turn the fan on from the thermostat, you can see a signal at the furnace letting you know that the thermostat is sending a signal to the furnace telling it that well, no, we need um, the fan to be turned on. Also, same thing for the reversing valve, also for AC mode. So, in essence, uh, in analyze mode, you know, you can, it can help you make, verify whether or not if you are getting proper signals from your thermostat. And then the last column here was the activate column. Now, basically, like I said, again, once you hook up uh, your wires uh, to um, uh, the furnace, let me zoom out here a little bit. Um, when you hook your wires up, you know, to the control board, you can activate any feature um, in the system and you don't have to wait for the unit to come on, uh, which is great, especially when you're doing a service call and you're trying to uh, you know, get the system to come on to see what it does, if it is doing anything wrong, and you turn everything on by the thermostat, you know, there may be a delay, and we're from a three or five minute delay. And if you're trying to troubleshoot or trying to figure out what's going on, you know, you kind of want to, you know, figure out on the fly. You don't want to have to sit there and wait, you know, possibly lose your train of thought, um, you know, each and every time you turn the system on and off. So having a zebra stat, you know, pretty much allows you to just flip a switch and it comes on. Now, here you have a total of um, uh, one, two, three, six. Uh, oh, I lost my train of thought six switches and I believe it is 
Yeah, six wires. Okay. So basically, um, on each each switch has is, is color coded. So under heat one, which is your regular your regular heat, you know you have the white wire. Uh, uh, heat two, secondary heat, you can use the gray. Uh, the first stage cool is yellow. Second stage cool if it's necessary, violet. Reversing valve orange, and then uh, the fan on green. Now you can use any one of these wires or any combination to hook up to where you need to hook up to. I mean, it'll still do the same function, and you can turn it on what have you. But to make it easier to kind of keep things, you know, uh, focus and on track, you know, you know, they label everything, you know, by color code, and you know, you go by color code on your wires. Okay. Um, so again, like I said earlier, so whatever you want to turn on, whether you know if you're checking the AC unit, you want to you know turn on the uh, indoor unit, you know hit cool, you know it'll activate the outdoor unit, you know without a problem. Um, and this is great, like I said, if you're doing an install or you're commissioning something, and or even troubleshooting, you know, if you want to take the thermostat off the wall and operate the system without the thermostat to make sure the thermostat is not an issue or a problem, or the th uh, the base of the thermostat is not an issue or a problem, uh, you can do that. Uh, when it comes to a heat pump, uh, you know, same thing. You still use yellow, so you can activate that. And depending on what system that you're working on, uh, some systems, you know, all you got to do is turn on the yellow, and it will activate the indoor blower fan uh, inside automatically. Other systems you have to turn on not only the yellow, but also you know the green, you know to activate the fan, uh, activate it on low speed. Now, um, in the AC mode, you know of course you know you actually turn on the uh, switch for cool, which is yellow, but also with the heat pump you got to hit the reversing valve, so that you can activate the reversing valve, you know from the air handler uh, to throw the system into uh, AC mode, uh, depending on uh, the unit. Um, and then again, like I said, you know, you can switch everything off, you know, uh, right away. You know, there isn't any delay. You know, as soon as you hit that switch, you know, everything comes on. And when you turn it off, depending on whether it's the heating cycle or AC cycle, you know, the endo blower fan is still going on. Of course, natural cycle off, uh, uh, the last thing. Now, um, the first switch here, uh, which is, you know, your first stage heat, has two functions, okay? Uh, you can use it to you know turn on the heat you know in your system and you can also use it to use it as a fuse built-in fuse circuit breaker okay so basically in essence it's a white wire so in this case you would use the white and red wire and you would connect these to wherever terminals the fuse is normally mounted to. So you pull the fuse out, connect these two, and hit activate, turn it on. And if you got a short, you know, it will trip the internal breaker in here. So if it trips the internal breaker, this red light where it says trip will light up. And all you got to do is turn the power off, turn that off, reset everything, try to pinpoint your short, turn everything back on and start all over again and you can do this as many times as you want okay this right here you know for the hundred dollars that this thing costs is well worth paying for it okay because those of you who have tried to you know, spend hours and or, or, or frustrating time trying to find a short and you're popping fuses and you're running out of fuses and of course you know Home Depot Lowe's are about to close and you're still out on the service call or you ran out of fuses on your truck uh, this little feature right here alone, you know, will save you, you know, dollars and time. And, and again, you know, having that built-in fuse protector, it is great. It also has a little uh, quick instruction manual on the bottom. So let's say if you don't have the, the manual with you on handy, uh, you can just kind of like glance over uh, these little quick instructions on how to do certain things. Um, it also has a built-in little hanger hook. You can see that so you can hang it anywhere you want to and it also has a magnetic back a wide magnetic back so even if there's no place where to hang it you can just stick this against any surface and you know it will stay in hold okay and uh, like I said again you know this is where every every technician should have uh, I mean yes you can jump you know wires out and stuff like that but you know the, the thing about it is 
like I said, when you're jumping out wires, you're twisting wires together to get something to come on, you run the risk of causing a spark, and that spark can also pop your fuse, okay? So unless you've got tons of fuses handy, you know, uh, uh, on you, um, you know, this would be a better option to go. And like I said, everything is color-coded. So for the most part, when you go to your furnace, depending on what type of setup you have, you use the red and blue wire um, to connect to 24 volt power. So in this case, red to red and blue to common. 24 volts there. Or if you're able to, you can connect these to the 24 volt side of your transformer. 24 volt power. And once you as soon as you connect 24 volt power, these three LEDs will light up to let you know that you have full 24 volt power. Okay? And not only does it let you know that you have 24 volt power, but depending on the on the brightness of the LEDs, it lets you know whether or not you got full 24 volt power or if you're less than 20 volt power, depending on how bright this LED goes. Okay? Then once you connect these two, depending on your setup, you can hook up the rest of your color coded wires. You know, it is a little tricky. I mean for the most part these alligator clips are pretty decent and they're all insulated so you don't have to worry about you know uh you know one wire touching another wire okay and and, and causing a short so you know for a hundred bucks you know comes with its own built-in case has a hanger has a magnetic back decent instructions and has a little quick instruction on the inside you know this is one of the best things you can ever have you know on the job site um i've used this you know to help me pinpoint shorts um, and also the cool thing too is like if you're working on the heat pump if you're working on the heat pump you could be outside and connect this to the uh, low voltage wires on the outside you know, with your 24 volts and all your other color coded wires and you can actually turn on the outdoor unit from outside as if you, you know were at a thermostat and then also depending on your hookup um, let me backtrack you can turn your outdoor unit on okay but you have to remember to go inside the house and what I've done on, on certain service calls if I didn't want to wait for the system to, to come on and I just want to just let's say do a quick check on the refrigerant level make sure that it is where it's supposed to be or that the unit is operating okay um, I will go inside and turn the indoor fan on at the uh, uh, air handler okay because you know air has to go across that coil in order for you to get get, get decent readings on your um, on your manifold. So you don't necessarily have to turn the heat or AC on per se. Because like I say, depending on some systems, you know, you turn the heat or AC on, you gotta wait five minutes. And sometimes that is the longest five minutes in the world, especially if you're trying to troubleshoot something that's real simple. So usually depending on the situation, I may just turn the heat and AC off, turn the indoor fan on, go outside. Hook this up to the outdoor condensing unit and turn the condensing unit on, you know, here, switch, just like that, comes on instantly. You know, in AC mode, hit the reversal valve, you know, because again, you know, depending on the setup, uh, some, uh, most heat pumps are energized um, in the AC mode, okay? Um, there have been times where, depending on whoever did the installation, they actually ran or actually connected the fan wire from the inside which I thought was very strange but it came in handy they connect they 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 they, they tied the indoor inside and outside wire and the fan wire together which you know and they ran it outside but they left it they didn't connect to the, to the condition unit. they just left it out and um, I discovered that by accident uh, actually I discovered it while not really paying attention I just connected this fan wire to the fan to the, um, to the green wire turn everything on and I said wait a minute oops I forgot I got a you know, turn the indoor fan on. So I went back inside and realized that the fan was already running, you know, from outside. So, like I said, depending on your setup, you know, you can actually turn on uh, the indoor fan from outside. Um, and also, depending on some models. Some models, you know, you have to turn on the cooling, you have to turn on the fan um, in order to get everything running. And other models, all you have to do is just turn on, well, not the cooling, but you have to turn on the uh, first stage uh, heating to uh, get the indoor fan to come on um, but for me you know it's easier just to go ahead and have the fan run 
um, from inside. And again, like I said, when it comes to you know, checking shorts, um, again, having that built-in 3 amp fuse protector is great. And like I said, again, you can also check for continuity. So instead, you have to sit there and and uh, use your meter probe to you know go through wires, go through this, go through that to check for shorts. Um, just have this thing hooked up. It'll tell you instantly if you've got continuity, you know. And if you do have continuity, you know, you're good to go. And if you don't have continuity, you know, you may possibly have issues. So that is it in a nutshell about the zebra stat. And they also make zebra stats um, for, or I should say, they make zebra stats to check the indoor blower motor. Okay? So if you want to check the blower motor for windings, you know, uh, uh, overall function, you know, whether or not, if, if it's going bad, you know, again, same setup, you no know, switches and everything. Only thing you have to do is buy a wire harness for that particular indoor blower motor. Um, those units are, are, are more expensive. Uh, they do a lot more, um, obviously. Uh, but it's a great, great, great tool to have, especially, let's say, if you, if you uh, do a lot of uh, motor or uh, furnace blower installs, you know, stuff like that, where you're, where you're replacing them you know, quite often. And um, you also it also is a good it's a good diagnostic tool to help you troubleshoot real fast whether or not you really do have an issue or just another way to verify um, that the motor that you're that you're troubleshooting or diagnosing is going bad. So that's it in a nutshell for the zebra stat. And if you have any questions, feel free um, to uh, email them to me. You can go to uh, www.zebrastat.com. Oh, I'm sorry. I think it's no uh, Zebra Stat Instrument. Zebra Instruments, right? I think it's www.zebrainstruments.com. And again, like I said, they'll have the basic uh, Zebra Stat there, along with the other two, and um, they'll tell you where you can order it. And nine times out of ten, you probably can go to your HVAC supply uh, dealer and uh, order these things. And um, again, great, great diagnostic tool to have. And that is it in a nutshell. So have a good evening.